OK, continuing the configuration. So far, we have assigned Ethernet 00, 0 to VRF red, which means that this is on another virtual routing table. We didn't touch the customer router because customer router doesn't need to know anything about this VRF configuration. It is just connecting to the router and it says it as, as a physical router. It doesn't understand whether this is virtual or physical. So let's go to router 1. So this is the one that we are going to configure and Ethernet 03 is going to be part of VRF red. And after that, I need to make sure that they have connection. So let's go here, show run interface Ethernet 0 slash 3 says so far I have only one IP address configured for that. So let's go to here, interface Ethernet 0 slash 3 is going to be on the uh, VRF forwarding table red. And I hit enter and again you see that it loses the IP configuration and this is why I just showed the running configuration so that I can easily copy that and paste it here and now everything seems to be good and again if I want to ping now because I am uh, putting this inside a VRF I need to use the VRF to ping so I ping the VRF is going to be red and this is case sensitive make sure that you type it uh, if it is all capital you type it in all capital or whatever case that you have used you need to use that and that is going to be 10 one four four and you can see that the ping is successful without any problem it runs and everything seems to be good now what about these two routers are they able to ping each other as a matter of fact there is a problem here if i just go to router four let's go to here you can see that now the adjacency is lost we do not have a neighborhood. Why? Because now this interface is not part of the interface that uh, was used to be in, in global configuration mode in global routing table. So if I just show IP route connected, I cannot see that interface here. 1014 is not part of this but it is part of a VRF so show IP route VRF red connected shows this as part of that which means that now OSPF process needs to understand this interestingly there is such thing possible and again all the configuration go to router one because other customers do not really need to know anything about VRF VRF should go to router one so I just go to router one and what I'm going to do is to remove the lines from router OSPF. So show run section router OSPF. So they are already removed automatically, but if they are not, you can really remove those lines from here. Uh, 10121 and 10141, those are the networks that no longer need to be under OSPF process. So what I need to do is to create a new process. Process 1 is already taken, so I'm going to go with process 2. OSPF process 2. And now, because this is going to go for a VP, VRF, so all I need to do is to assign the VRF here. So I just type VRF, and the name of the VRF is red. Okay, now that I have this, I can assign a router ID, of course, of 1111. There is no problem with that. It says router ID is in use by OSPF process 1. Okay, doesn't really matter. Let's say that 11, 11, 11, 11. It doesn't have to be one of the interfaces. It just has to be, um, you know, unique here. Now let's add the networks here. So what I'm going to do is to type network 10, 1, 2, 1, that belongs to area 0. And after some time, you see this loads. And also 10, 1, 4, 1. And there should be no problem here. Very nice. Now, if I go to router 2, I should see it show IP route. And there is no VRF on router 2, you know that. I should be able to reach to the other side. There is no problem with that. 
Now there are two networks which I'm going to add here. One of them, 150, 20, 20, 0 to router 2. So let's go to router 2. And I'm going to type interface look back, for example, 20. IP address is going to be 150, 20, 20, 2. And I'm going to go to router SPF process. Uh, what was that? 1. And I'm going to add this network to the list of networks which are going to be advertised to the other side. And the same should go on router 4. On router 4 I have an extra network which is 150.44.4. So let's create this one in configure terminal interface loopback 44. IP address is going to be 150.44.4.4 and rather OSPF should advertise this. So 150.44.4.4 in area 0. Very nice. Now if I check this on router 2, I should see this network as well. So again, show IP route. It says that I can receive this from the other side and there is no problem reaching to that. So why is this in uh, 60? Okay, that's right. This is the correct thing. So if I just go with a normal ping, 150, 20, 22, you can see that it is reachable. So, so far, what we have done is configured OSPF. Let me show this clearly. Show run section rather OSPF. Now you can see that there are two OSPF processes here. One, the global process without any VRF assigned. One, the VRF one, the virtualized one, which has its own routing table. So here, if on this router, I want to check the routing table, I need to go with VRF. So show IP route is going to show me the global routing table. But show IP route VRF is going to show me uh, the VRF routing table. For, for example, VRF red, as a matter of fact. And if you just type VRF all, you can see that all the VRFs all the routing tables are going to be visible here. Global routing table plus the VRF routing tables here. And one of the routing table uh, VRFs, of course, doesn't have anything. That is VRF blue, which we haven't configured yet. Okay, let's go for the configuration of the other VRFs. So let's exit here. And for this, I'm going to go with the new syntax, VRF definition. Again, you need to go to global configuration mode type VRF and instead of typing IP VRF I just type VRF and go with definition and then the name of the VRF here okay now you see there is a small difference here that is the address family and this is necessary to be configured because we want to have this for IPv4 or IPv6 address family enabled so what I need to do is to first of all configure an RD so RD is going to be 3535. I can configure route targets. In my case, of course, this is not so necessary, but I can do that. Again, route target has the same syntax as the normal IPVRF command. I'm going to go with both. Type 3535 as well here. Now, I need to enable this for IPv4 address family because if I just show VRF, you can see that VRF blue does not have any protocol enabled by default. Although VRF red, which normal IP VRF command created that, has this IPv4 enabled. So what I need to do is to type address family IPv4 unicast and hit enter. And again, if I check this verification command one more time, now you can see that this protocol is added for VRF blue. This is one of the differences that you need to take care of. What about the other difference? 
So the other difference is when you assign it to an interface. Let's check the interface that we are going to assign to this. Interface Ethernet 01 and 02. So what I need to do first of all is to check the IP address on that. I show run for interface Ethernet 0 slash 1, also 0 slash 2. Now you see the IP address uh, allocations to this. So what I'm going to do is to type interface range. I'm going to do both at the same time, Ethernet 0 slash 1 to 2. Now, instead of typing IPVR forwarding, what I need to type is VRF forwarding. So this is the difference. And after that, you just type the name. You just type the name, and it is case sensitive, of course. And you hit enter. Now, it says that two IP addresses are lost. That's OK. I'm going to go with interface configuration mode. This is for Ethernet 01. So this was 02, and this was 01. So this is this and 02, which is this one. OK. Now, something interesting happens again. If I just show IP route, they are removed from the global routing table. Now they should be in their special VRF. So if I just show IP route VRF blue, you can see them here. Very nice. What about the OSPF process? Again, we need to take care of that. So if I just show run section rather OSPF, this is the configuration for global OSPF that we have. We no longer need these here. What I need to do is to remove them and assign them to an OSPF process that has a VRF enabled. So I just type rather OSPF1. These two should be removed. I don't need them anymore. Also this one. I'm going to create a new router process, router OSPF. This time three, I guess, because one and two are used before. VRF blue. And let's say that the router ID is going to be something like 111, 111, 111, 111. And now the networks. These three networks should go here. Now, after some time, you should see the adjacencies enabled without any problem. And there they are. Very nice. Now, again, if I show IP route VRF blue, you see the routes here. For router 3 and router 5, everything should be seamless. So if I go to router 5 and show IP route, I can see everything on the other side. And there is no problem with that. So let's enable these new networks that I am going to add. On router 3, I need to have 150.20.20.0 again. So I just go to router 3, enable uh, interface loopback 0, or loopback 20, sorry. IP address is going to be 150.20.20, let's say 3. Of course, there should be a dot here. And if I go to router SPF1, I can advertise this as well. So 120.23 under area 0. And on router 5, I needed to add an extra one, 150.111.55. So here, I just add interface loop back 111. IP address is going to be 150, 111, 5, 5. And I need to add it to OSPF process. Rather, OSPF 1 network is going to be this. And this is the wildcard mask. And this is the area. And save everything. Let's save everything and save all routers. Now let's go to the diagram. Something interesting is here. 
you can see that I have two overlapping networks. This one is 150-2020 network on red, 150-2020 network on blue. All of them go through rather one, but they do not mix up. Each one of them is separate. As a matter of fact, this one just belongs to its own network. This one belongs to its own network. And there is no problem in routing for both networks. They are not going to mix up. None of the routers on the left are going to be able to get to the routers on the right because they are separate VRFs. And this is very, very important. Okay, so far so good. Overall configuration of VRF is done. You saw how we did that. We created VRF light. Everything was like this. Nothing more than that. And also I showed you how you can configure the routing protocol uh, to check this. Of course I'm going to show you how we can redistribute if necessary and how we can configure other routing protocols as well. But this is for VRF flight, and in next session I'm going to use another topology to continue.